Hi, my name is Chris Polad. I'm a pediatrician at an academic institution, and I happen to be a Bible nerd, a child of divorce, and soon-to-be author. I created Little Pieces Club Ministries around the idea that when our hearts break, God can still make works of art from the broken pieces. I run small groups for children and teens and consult with and support parents. I also give lectures and seminars upon request. Our content centers around the science of adversity, abuse, and neglect, that is, ACE science, and how biblical design patterns harmonize with it. Along the way, I discovered that Jesus' story, wrapped in the design patterns of the Good Shepherd and the Tree of Life, help us process, grieve, forgive, and reintegrate our souls after trauma. And this helps us grow strong in solitude and community, leading us to love God, self, and others which is what the greatest commandments or greatest blessings are all about. This podcast is geared to help parents understand their children's point of view and to be a good shepherd and tree of life through the hard times. You can follow the ministry on social media in several different areas. Uh, On Instagram, we are at LPC Ministries. On Twitter, we are at Club Pieces. And on TikTok, we are at Little Pieces Club. In the YouTube video of this podcast, you will see QR codes for our Facebook group and our YouTube content. I love getting questions and comments, so now let's get into this week's episode. Our at-home format for small groups, for those of you um, trying to support small groups, um, starts with a fun and relaxing 15 to 20 minutes. Next time is followed by a snack or basically a meal time uh, where we go over prayers in a style that is very much like uh, examine of conscience. And then we go into the video lesson part of the application uh, following, uh, followed by a prayer to close the video and a fun and relaxing activity again for 15 to 20 minutes. So right now we're just looking at a slide uh, as I'm going through the presentation that reminds us to do something fun for 15 to 20 minutes. Hopefully it does not involve a screen, although if you are having um, good fun, good clean fun with someone else, uh, the screen time is okay. And then just remember to set a timer so you come back. A little bit of wisdom about why we set up small groups this way is we are actually trying to demonstrate the concept of Sabbath keeping. And we'll get more and more into that as we go, but it is a time um, to regularly set aside work, and that can mean a variety of different things, to simply rest and delight in the gifts that God has given us. So now we're welcoming people back from their fun time, and you will need journals, prayer template, um, and then um, uh, go ahead and continue with the next um, activity. So now we're going into snack and prayer time or journaling, depending upon uh, the age group. Uh, The older kids, I tend to Um, tend to encourage them to keep a journal uh, while we have activity sheets for the kids. So what you're looking at on the screen is our prayer template where we look over the the week and we just ask kids to connect with the time that they have uh, felt uh, joyful and happy. Um, They have had a good amount of fun uh, and then invited them to bring forward their negative emotions like disgust, anger, sadness, and fear. And when we go through those, we also want to ask, did God feel close or did he feel far at those particular times? And this is reflective of a very ancient process called examine of conscience. And what it does is it just helps reintegrate our souls. When we get a little far from God, um, we can realize that that's okay and we just simply invite him to come back. So if those of you are leading a small group session and you um, are doing this, that's the basic idea. 
And what we always want to do is present ourselves as very warm and welcoming, no matter what kids are feeling at a, a given time. And they may even try to provoke anger out of us. And so we just want to be aware and ready uh, to respond with patience and kindness. We are now moving on to ask me and ask each other, which is uh, our time in small group where the kids uh, can ask any question of the small group leader about growing up in a divorced family. And this is the time uh, that's very valuable in your um, ability to write down things specifically to pray for for each kid and also send me questions that I can then put out in uh, future content that uh, helps everyone know um, how to answer uh, questions like that. This week's additional Ask Me and Ask Each Other is name two gifts or character traits that God gave you and that you are grateful for. And for those of you running the small group, just realize this is supposed to um, be an icebreaker question just to open up um, conversation to a couple different things. So this, now we're looking at the title slide, and this is, we're still in the private Christian journey. And this is part 11 for the children, part 12 for teens. And this is making big decisions with God. And the big word is called discernment. And it means walking with him always or having a sense that uh, he is there with you so that when you need to make decisions um, that you can um, understand how to hear his voice. And again, a very special thank you to Ruth Haley Barton uh, today's lesson was inspired by chapter 7 of Sacred Rhythms, and again, uh, we adapted it with the author's permission. Just as a reminder, uh, also, we are uh, thinking about um, a tree of life that uh, we're in a series that we call the Private Christian Journey, and that is what goes on in our roots below the surface where no one can see. And that is in our hearts where we seek, find, and, ex and eventually accept the um, gifts and wisdom and love of God so that in our trunks, branches, and so on, uh, we can uh, produce fruit and draw people to us uh, with the beauty of an amazing tree of life so that we can then give this wisdom to the community. We've also been building on the idea that many of these are choices that we have, uh, but we are um, limited by the concept of the rider and the elephant, and that we can choose to seek to know God, we can be willing to accept his free gifts, we can choose to ask him for help, we can choose also to spend time with him in solitude and prayer. And if we are at all uncomfortable with the concept of God, we can ponder the stories of Job and Joseph uh, to help us realize that things aren't always wonderful uh, in God's kingdom, but there is wisdom to be gained in those times. And we can see ourselves with God's help, and that's the self-examine. And so when we do that, we talk about an elephant assessment test. And today's, um, uh, today's small group uh, or topic is another very large elephant assessment test. So uh, just like last week, we skipped our normal one because that's in essence what we're talking about today. So we have to remember a particular character for this week's um, example, and that is Mary. Uh, and that's Jesus's mother. She had a very, very big decision to make. So we have a very long scripture that we are going to um, look at today, and that is Luke 1, 
or Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 37. So in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled and at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. So when we look at this long passage, there's a few things that we need to understand that are maybe not so obvious, but are, um, but are when you think of the context of the situation. So by all guesses and scholarship, it seems that Mary was about 15 years old, and so she would be finding herself pregnant and not married. And this was a big deal in her time. Because what that would uh, mean is that she would be shamed by the community and then shamed by her husband-to-be and then had to deal with a painful pregnancy. So she had a choice to make. Was she going to accept this or was she going to reject the angel's um, proposition for her? But yet what we see her do is say, here I am the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. So she realized all of the shame that this would take, uh, would cause, but yet was still at 15 years of age able to say, um, uh, go ahead, Lord, with your plan. So um, in the small group setting, we can pause and discuss Mary's character and relationship with God that led to her feeling this way. So who did she value more, community, Joseph, her husband-to-be, or God? And what this is called is indifference, and that is being open to God's will means being able to courageously look past the world's view and your isolated personal desires and want to do what God is asking of you. Now, this is a tough concept to teach to children, um, so it's okay just that we're planting a seed today. Um, so uh, if, if they don't get it, that's fine. Most of the teens um, might be able to, and that's, that's fine as well. So we can look at the next slide that we're looking at are choices. And so I have them um, uh, kind of broken down by age category. So we can go through um, some of them, but I would pause and just kind of do a, a brainstorming decision. So what we're uh, our brainstorming session on the decisions that uh, they can make. So in the younger ages, they can choose to pick up their room. They can choose what they draw, like a scary monster or a sunset. They could choose to play video games all day. And then do they could lie about maybe something their older sibling wants them to cover up. And when they're older... If it's a divorce situation, do I live with mom or dad? Should I get a job? Which classes should I take? Which college should I go to? And then who will I marry? So you can see that these decisions get bigger and bigger. And um, again, remember this is a group brainstorming session. So um, go with what the group is coming up with and maybe just have some of these listed as some starter questions. So the next slide that we're looking at is basically a, um, a uh, top-down view of a road that has a fork in it. So really what this is, is you could have a choice to go to the right 
and you could have a choice to go to the left. And so this is to illustrate the fact that we often have to make big choices. So there's a question mark there in the middle. So what we're going over is how do spiritually mature people make big choices like Mary? And so we have some more big words that we have to decide on here. Right now we're looking at um, a picture of um, probably a family, a mother and two daughters. And the word that we are talking about in this uh, instance is consolation. And that is, this is a picture of people who feel very close. And the concept here is that God is feeling very close. So, um, so one of the things that, um, especially divorced kids, but also those that have been through trauma, they have a particular um, habit that they don't share their feelings uh, because either they don't want to hurt their mom and dad's feelings or they think it will disrupt things. So the question becomes is, do you love yourself by doing this? Do I love another by doing that? Do I love God by hiding my feelings? And so have we asked God how or what we should do with respect to uh, letting our feelings be known? So before we leave this idea of consolation, uh, we do want to ask the kids and or if uh, you know, you're prepping for this, ask yourself. Tell about a time where God felt really close and then see what the kids come up with. So next we're looking at a single person walking on a very large um, concrete uh, area. This is the opposite word, and that's called desolation. So we have consolation and we have desolation. And this is where God feels far away. And so again, we're going to go through the same types of exercises that we did for consolation. So tell about a time where God felt far away is the next question to pose to the group. So now what do we do about this if God feels far away? So how can you change that? Because remember the point of today is that we, get, we do our best choices when we have God with us. And so we have the simple question to the group is, uh, on, on the next slide is, do you make the best choices with God or without, the, without him? But the next question is, how do you know that you are choosing with God or without him? So we know through other small group sessions that we love God and he helps us see ourselves more clearly so that we can grow and be able to love others better. And just remember that rule number one in the Bible is the greatest blessings where we love God, others, and ourselves. And we balance all of those. So what I'm sharing in a slide right now is the fact that um, we have three hearts that represent God, ourselves, and others, all with crowns above them to reflect the um, fact that we reflect the divinity in God. And so that loving him means to both see him and understand that he is the king or he is the ultimate source of, of glory. But we can't use that as to justify all of our behaviors. So this is bounded by wisdom, concepts of right relationship, and that's doing the right thing for people hope that even in bad times, God is good and God is with us. And then finally, justice. The fact that um, one of the things that we should do is look out for people who don't have power and help them. 
in as a dignified way as possible. So that's the ideal that the Bible is setting up. But we have this idea of idolatry, and that is where God is not the most important thing in our lives. And so that means that we've either elevated ourselves or others above God. And so if ourselves are elevated above everybody, as in the picture that we're showing, this is selfishly selfish. And that is a, a form of idolatry or a form of replacing God with the concept of ourselves. But just as similarly, we could place the opinions of others over God's and our own. And this is unlovingly selfless or being a martyr. So we have to keep these things in mind. And when we are in these types of mindsets, that's when God feels far away. So we hope that we can get back to the ideal where we understand God is in charge and that we are to love others as ourselves. So a quick look at the activity sheet for the younger kids reveals that the community questions are brainstorm the choices that others have and that if you can and there's time, uh, brainstorm choices that the individual uh, children have. And then there is a solitude activity um, that helps them determine how close they are to God. And that is uh, some questions that God loves me personally. And they can just put an X on the part of the curve uh, or part of the spectrum that they feel that they match. And then I am supposed to love God, self, and others. Okay, yes or no. God, as the Holy Spirit, talks to me. Maybe that's kind of in the middle. They're not sure. And God, I want to please you. And they can put an X where they feel that is. Okay. Now, for the teens, what we're looking for is a solitude activity. So, am I ready to make big choices with God? And basically, we're going through the same questions that we just did on the activity sheet. So, God loves me personally. You have the elephant. Uh, and this is more illustrated so that they can see what's going on. You have the elephant on the left side of the spectrum. It says, no way, he doesn't love me at all. But in the middle of the spectrum, he's not really sure. And then all the way on the other side of the spectrum... The answer is, I am so happy God loves me. And that's where our example of Mary was. So next, I am supposed to love God, self, and others. So no way, I don't matter, is maybe one side of the spectrum. No way, I just look out for myself, might be another answer. I'm not really sure is sort of in the middle. And then the last one is, I want to love everyone. And that is, again, what our Mary probably would have chosen. So God, as the Holy Spirit talks to me, no way, that sounds really crazy, is on the desolation side. And I'm not really sure I hear him is in the middle. And the consolation side is I love hearing the Holy Spirit. And that's probably where Mary was. So if we put all of these on the same spectrum, um, we see this very large, colorful slide. And we put the elephant in the middle or sorry, we put the elephant on the outside. So does God hate me if I feel far away? So this is another question that we want to think about because if God feels far away, we tend to project on him what we're feeling inside. 
So the answer to that question is always no. And what if I just don't know? And that's very uh, that's a very common thing to think about. And then the final mindset that we can find ourselves in is you invite God to help you make choices and to be with you. And that's one of the ways that you can grow closer to God is that you're using your internal ability to make a choice to invite God into these places where you might not even be very sure. And then the final slide, we see, God, I want to please you. So even if we fall short, the desire to please God is what's most important. So we know that we're not perfect, none of us, but Jesus died to save us just the same. And the point is to become aware uh, where we are so that we can slowly make different choices. Actions are important and choices be go before actions. So just wanting to get better with God's help is enough for now. So God, like a shepherd, leads you to better and better places. So one day, when we have a choice like Mary, we'll be ready. So remember, even if we fall short, the desire to please God sometimes is enough. Well, all the time is enough. But that desire to please God pleases God even if you find that you're falling short. So we look at a long path with two people, a parent and a child, walking along this path, uh, going off into the sun. And it's a very great illustration of how God would like us to be, inviting us to walk, inviting him to walk with us is what we're looking for. So if we take a very... A um, uh, close look at those two who are walking and then realize that that is the posture that we need to take when we make big choices, we can superimpose that picture back onto our picture at the crossroads and realize that God is either going to help us make the choice to go to the right or the choice to go to the left. But also the wisdom is if he is silent, that may mean that he, is, he wants you to make the choice and he will be with you no matter what. So those are the lessons that we're supposed to be trying to uh, get across in these sessions. And just remember that these sessions are meant to be a starting point and they can be somewhat spirit-led. As long as you understand the main points in these, uh, you can help lead the children to, um, to just understand the posture the where that they can invite God to be with them. Um, those are the types of things that we're trying to plant seeds in the kids as we go. So as I always do, I'll close us in prayer today. And I just want to say a very big thank you for those of you that are listening to these podcasts to get a sense of how to disciple your children or the children of others through the process of healing from divorce, separation, or other types of adversity and trauma. So Abba, choices are hard sometimes. Above all, we want you with us when we make them. Help us know the right loving choice when we are faced with it. Help us understand why we feel far from you at different times so that we can find our way back to you. Mary was willing to make an amazing choice that people didn't understand. Reassure us when needed. Help us have the courage to make the choice that pleases you most and not necessarily those, of, uh, uh, those around us or even ourselves. And if we choose the wrong thing, remind us you still love us and are still with us, always teaching us how to be better and better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for being with us. Uh, we'll talk more soon.